Hi everyone, I'm Shahnaz from CrossYourDreams.com and today I'm going to share these lovely chunky beanies with you. They're super quick to work and it took me just around 1 hour and 15 minutes to make a woman's size small. To make these lovely beanies, I used Cozy Wool from Loops and Threads, which is a size 6, super bulky yarn. Along with it, I used two hooks, an 8mm hook for the main hat and a 6.5 millimeter hook for the hat band or the ribbing. Today I'll be demonstrating the woman's size small. If you want to make it in any other size, please check out the free pattern on my blog. I have left the link in the description box below. So gather your supplies and let's get started. To start your hat with the smaller 6.5 millimeter hook, Chain 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 and work a slip stitch in the second chain from your hook. This is the first and this is the second chain. So work a slip stitch into that, work a slip stitch into the next chain. Now some people slip stitch really tight. If you are one of those, you can maybe work your ribbing using the bigger hook or slip stitch loose like I do. To make your slip stitches loose, before you start your slip stitch by inserting your hook into the next chain or stitch, pull up that loop on your hook. The size of your slip stitch will depend on the size of your loop. So just pull up that loop before you start your slip stitch. Once you do it a few times, you will get used to it and easily do it without even thinking. So pull up that loop and then work your slip stitch. So that will give you a nice big slip stitch which isn't very tight. Now I've completed my first row and I now have seven slip stitches. So now let's begin row two, chain one, turn. And for row two and every other row, we will only be working stitches into the back loop of each stitch. Every stitch has a front loop and a back loop and we will insert our hook only under the back loop while working our stitches. This is our chain one, so go ahead and work a slip stitch into the back loop only of the next of the first stitch. So insert your hook into the back loop only and complete a slip stitch. Pull up that loop, insert your hook into the back loop of the next stitch and complete a slip stitch. Insert your hook into the back loop only of the next stitch and complete a slip stitch. So go ahead, work a slip stitch into each of the remaining stitches and at the end you should have worked seven slip stitches. It gets easier once you have a little more fabric to hold on to. The first two rows are always harder on such a small piece. So now I have seven. Now I'll repeat this row by chaining one, turn and working slip stitches into the back loop only of this row. So work a slip stitch into the back loop only of the first, a slip stitch into the back loop only of the second, slip stitch into the back loop of the next and every time you pull up your loop make sure to pull it up a little higher. If you're working with a big hook, this may not be needed. Work a slip stitch in the back loop of each stitch across. And keep repeating this row until your ribbing is 18 and a half inches long. I have now completed my ribbed band and it is 18 and a half inches long. 
But before we seam the sides of the ribbing, I want you to notice that this ends in a braid pattern, but we need one extra row after that. So work one more row of slip stitch into the back loops only. That will give us one extra row after the braid. So now if you look from the top, after the last braid you have one more extension which is like a braid but it's, it's towards the side and you cannot see it on the top. That is how your ribbing should stop or end in this kind of row. Like after a braid there should be an extension and it shouldn't end right at the braid. Now let's seam the two ends together, making sure you can see the extra row after the braid. Fold the two shorter ends, bring them together. And now this is where you can see the extra row after the braid. Take your hook out from the loop and flip to the foundation chain side. We will start slip stitching from this side. And when you insert your hook through the foundation chain side, don't go through the very edge and don't go very close to the braid here. Insert it somewhere in between, a quarter inch away from the edge. So if you look at the other side, your hook will emerge very close to the first braid on the other side and that is what you want. So now insert your hook through the foundation chain side and then grab the loop on the other side and pull through. Now slip stitch through the foundation chain side going only a quarter inch deep and the back loop only of the slip stitch on the other side. quarter inch deep here, back loop only on the other side. When you reach the very edge, don't even go quarter inch deep, just go through the edge like that. Just the last stitch. I think that works. I saw that that works better here. So I'll just go through the edge here and then the back loop on the other side. To join, we've completed joining the two sides of the ribbing. Now you can flip. So this is how the seam looks. It's pretty seamless like you see. You can use this tail when you are like weaving it in. We'll just bring this a little bit more closer. And now turn it inside out. To make sure your seam is hidden inside, now that you have joined the shorter sides together, you will work single crochet stitches around the ribbing like that. And for a woman size small, you need to distribute 42 stitches around your ribbing. You will be working your stitches into the valleys between the braids and not into the braids themselves because it's going to be hard to stick your hook into them. And before you start working your single crochet stitches, switch to the 8mm crochet hook. You will be making the rest of your hat with the bigger hook. To distribute 42 stitches around the hat, first make an estimate and count the total number of valleys you have around your ribbing. So go ahead, start from where you have the loop. That will be your first valley and go ahead and count the valleys all around your ribbing and come back and meet me. I have now counted the valleys around my ribbing and I have a total of 41. So to make it 42, a multiple of 3, I will be adding an increase at the seam. If you have say 40 or one or two lesser than me, you can add more increases. Just make sure you are distributing it evenly around your ribbing. If you have more valleys than 42, you might have to add 
decreases to make it 42. So finally you have to have 42 single crochet stitches worked all around your hat. So let's begin. Chain 1 to start. Make sure you have switched to the bigger 8mm crochet hook. I'm at the seam so I will work an increase there. Remember I had only 41 valleys so I need 42 so instead of working one single crochet into this valley I will work two and when you work your single crochet stitches don't go right through the edge under one loop because it's going to leave a hole in your work go a little deep a quarter inch deep and then work your single crochet stitches so I'm working one single crochet stitch into that valley and one more into the same place so now I have adjusted the stitch count and now I can go ahead and work just one single crochet into each of these valleys here. So go ahead, work your single crochet stitches. And at the end you should have a total of 42 stitches. That is a multiple of 3. I have now worked a single crochet into each of the valleys and have reached back where I started at the seam with the increase. I now have a total of 42 stitches and now to end the round slip stitch to the first single crochet. So now your base round is complete. Now let's work round two. To work round two, we will be distributing 14 repeats around the hat. And each repeat is made of two double crochet, chain two, and a single crochet worked into the same stitch. So let's begin the first repeat, chain two. This will count as your first double crochet. Work one more double crochet into the same stitch. chain 2, work a single crochet into the same stitch. So that completes our first repeat. Now skip the next two stitches and work a repeat into the next which is two double crochet. Chain 2 and a single crochet into the same stitch. Now skip the next two stitches and work three double crochet chain, sorry, two double crochet chain two and a single crochet into the next. Skip the next two and work two double crochet, chain two and a single crochet in the next stitch. So go ahead, keep working like that. Skip two stitches and a repeat in the next. Skip two stitches, a repeat in the next. Skip two stitches, a repeat in the next. Like that and each repeat is two double crochet, chain two and a single crochet worked into the same stitch. Work all the way around and come back and meet me when you have just two stitches left. I'm now at the end of my round and I have just two stitches left. So I'll make the loop on my hook tight and then slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain two. To see your beginning chain, you'll have to just pull it here so you can count from the bottom. This is the first one and this is a second. The first one is hidden under this loop. So this is a second chain, tighten that loop and then work a slip stitch into the second chain. We're trying to keep that gap small. So now that completes round one and to work round two, pull this loop up just a tiny bit and then turn and work a repeat in this 
chain two space. That is two double crochet, chain two, and a single crochet into that chain two space. So just pull up the loop a bit and then directly start working your double crochets and your chain two and single crochet. So I worked two double crochet, now chain two and a single crochet into the same chain two space. Now go ahead and work a repeat in the next one. Notice we did not chain one at the beginning when we turned, we just pulled up the loop on your hook a, just by a bit and then started directly working a repeat into the next chain two space. So that is something to keep in mind. Now go ahead, work a repeat in each of the chain two spaces across all the way to the end. So one repeat in each chain two space across. That is two double crochet, chain two and a single crochet in each chain two space. So go ahead and work in every chain two space until you reach the end of the round and you don't have any more chain two spaces to work into. So go ahead, keep working repeats and I'll meet you at the end of the round. I have reached the end and I just have one more repeat to work into. This is the only chain two space left to work. So I'll work a repeat into that. That is two double crochet. Chain two and a single crochet into the same chain two space. And now we have to slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet, which is this one. This is the second and this is the first. And slip stitch to that double crochet to complete the round. Now pull that loop up just a bit, turn, and just like you did the round you completed just now, you will repeat the same for another three rounds. That is just pull up that loop a bit and then directly start working repeats into the chain two spaces all the way around. So start working your repeats. That is two double crochet. Oh, sorry. Chain two and a single crochet in to the same chain two space. So go ahead and work a repeat in each of the chain two spaces here. The chain two spaces will be under these bumps that you see here. Look under that and you can find your chain two spaces easily. So work a repeat in each of them and at the end slip stitch to the first double crochet and turn your work. So come back and meet me when you have a total of five of these rows. To count your rows in this, your first row will go like this and your next row will go like this and your next one will go like this. The stitches will be aligned like this. So that's how you count. I have now completed five rows. This is how you count your rows. One, two, three, four, and five. So I have completed five and now let's begin our round of decreases to shape the hat. After you have completed five rounds, turn your work. Pull that loop up a little bit. And now instead of working two double crochet, chain two and a single crochet into each chain two space, we will work one double crochet, chain one and a single crochet into each of the chain two spaces. So go ahead, work one double crochet, chain one and a single crochet into each of the chain two spaces across. One double crochet, chain one and a single crochet. One double crochet, chain one and a single crochet in the next chain two space. So keep working like that. That is one double crochet, chain one and a single crochet into each of these chain two spaces and I'll meet you at the end of the round. I'm now 
at the end of my round and I have worked my last repeat into the last chain two space and this is my first double crochet so I will slip stitch into that to complete this decreased round and now pull that loop up a bit and then turn your work and work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet into each of the chain one spaces across so this can be a little hard to find out so just use your fingers to feel the space and then work into that so pull up that loop and then work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet into the first chain one space I like to keep a marker here because it gets a little harder to identify the first repeat so I'm going to place a marker in the first repeat like that so when I come back I'll know where to slip stitch now look for the next chain one space it's right here I'll work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet into the chain one space now find the next chain one and work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet so go ahead and work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet in each of the chain one spaces it will be between your single crochet and your slanting double crochet stitches that is where your chain one spaces will be so go ahead work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet in each chain one space across until you reach back near the marker I'm almost at the end of my round and I have one more chain one space to work into which is right here and I'll work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet into that space so go ahead and work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet into the last chain one space and slip stitch to the first double crochet I've just marked the repeat and it's not really the double crochet so here is where the double crochet stitches so I'm going to slip stitch into that So that, that completes our second row of decreases and for the next row just go ahead and repeat the one we worked right now that is pull up this loop turn and work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet into each of these chain one spaces around and then slip stitch to the first double crochet so go ahead work one more round just like the one you completed now in the middle of my row I ran out of yarn so I'll be joining another skein and I want to show you how I'm going to do that I completed one repeat and I'm going to work my next repeat into the next chain one space so I'll work a double crochet and a chain one and then while working my single crochet into the same chain space I will join the next skein so start working the single crochet as usual and when you have two loops left on your hook yarn over the new skein and pull it through so that will join the new skein and then continue with that work a repeat in the next chain one space so work a double crochet chain one and a single crochet in the next chain one space and go ahead and complete your round and come back and slip stitch to the first double crochet to complete your third decrease round I have now completed the third decrease round and ended it with a slip stitch to the first double crochet now I'll pull that loop up a bit and then turn my work and work my fourth I'll now work my fourth round of decreases which will be a double crochet and a single crochet into each chain one space that is you will eliminate the chain one between the two stitches now so work a double crochet and a single crochet into each chain one space across so that is the fourth round of decrease
so go ahead work a double crochet and a single crochet in each chain one space across all the way to the end and I'll show you how to end the row I'm now at the end of this round and I'll end it with a slip stitch in the very first stitch the first stitch is always a little tight and end with the slip stitch now turn your work and now we'll work single crochet a single crochet decrease a single crochet and a single crochet decrease like that so go ahead and work a single crochet in the next stitch and place a marker to indicate your first stitch so when you end the round you'll know where to slip stitch work a single crochet decrease across the next two stitches to work a single crochet decrease pull up a loop in the first stitch pull up a loop in the second stitch and when you have three loops left on your hook yarn over and pull through all the three to complete your single crochet decrease in the next stitch work a single crochet in the next two stitches work a decrease again pull up a loop in the first stitch pull up a loop in the second stitch yarn over and pull through all the three loops on your hook work a single crochet in the next and a single crochet decrease in the next two so continue working like that a single crochet and a single crochet decrease all around your hat until you reach back near the marker I have reached the end of my round and I just have one more stitch to work into so the previous one was a decrease so I will work a single crochet into the last stitch and complete my round with a slip stitch into the first marked stitch slip stitch and I will cut around 18 inches of yarn and that tail will help me cinch the top of the hat closed now thread the tail through a yarn needle turn your hat inside out and run your needle in and out through every alternate stitch you'll be skipping one stitch in between and keep going in skip the next one come out skip the next go in work that all the way around Now cinch the top shut like that, make a knot and weave in the end. Now go ahead and weave in that tail, go once in this direction, back and then again back and make sure you go through different areas and not through the same area to avoid bulk. So go and work in and out pull through now go back in and out pull through now go back like that in and out and pull through you can now go ahead and trim your yarn when you weave in make sure you don't make it too tight or your hat won't stretch now go ahead and weave in the tails from changing the skein weave in just like I showed you and now let's weave in this beginning tail at the base of your hat thread the yarn needle and bring these 
two sides together from the side insert your hook under this side and bring it together to close that small gap there was at the beginning close that and then weave it inside the hat going back and forth like that Now I'll trim my yarn. So that completes my beanie. Now to attach a fur pom-pom to the hat, I like to add a long elastic, a long piece of round elastic to the pom-pom. I just thread it through a needle, a regular sewing needle, and then pull it through my pom-pom. And what I will do is pull it pull the two ends one inch apart into the hat and then tie it inside so I can remove it if I want to wash my hat. So I'll put my hook inside the hat and pull it, pull the elastic from one side gently and now the side has become shorter so I'll just pull it back just enough and then I'll bring my hook one inch away and then pull the other end inside and once I have both the ends inside I will go into the hat and tie them together like this tightly so whenever I want to wash my hat I can just take this off So now the pom-pom is attached securely without any sewing. If you enjoyed working this hat with me, don't forget to like, subscribe and press that bell icon to receive notifications when I post new patterns. Thank you so much for watching.